What's going on there YouTube? This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video review of not the Logitech Harmony One because, well, that's not really the device we're here to talk about. What I do want to give you a little bit of a background on is our Logitech Harmony One and why we use it. Now this is our universal remote we use for our family room, our, our home theater system. And the reason we use it is because A, it simplifies things. It puts all the devices in one spot, but that would be like any other universal remote. The reason we do it is for activities. Now what activities do is, especially with modern home system or modern home theater systems where you have an amplifier and a TV and or a projector and then your source, you know, you're not just using one device at a time anymore. And let's say you want to turn the volume up while you're watching the satellite receiver, but if you push volume up while you're on the satellite receiver selection, nothing's going to happen. And you don't want to turn your TV volume up because you want to turn your surround sound volume up. So as you can see, there just becomes a lot of issues and you have either A, a lot of remotes or one that's really inefficient. So what you know, the purpose of the Logitech Harmony One line is, is to kind of bring everything together. And they've done a really, really good job at it. We've loved the Harmony One remotes and they've really had a monopoly on this market for uh, several years. The problem is they're relatively expensive. Uh, if we take a look on Amazon, this uh, model we have right here is a hefty $203 and that's on Amazon. Retail is $393. So as you can see, it is very, very pricey. Now, if we move to the product we're going to be reviewing today, which is the uh, the Red Eye Mini from ThinkFlood. This is the same idea, same concept, except for rather than being its own device with bulky desktop software to set up all the codes and whatnot, you use the beauty and the elegance of your iOS device and plug this little attachment into the headphone jack. Anyways, the ThinkFlood Red Eye Mini will run you $49 US, and that is uh, if you buy it retail. You can actually find it for quite a bit cheaper on Amazon and eBay and a bunch of other different places. So, you know, you you get the same functionality as this $300 remote in the price that's less than 30 bucks. This is the price of a cheap Walmart universal remote. So it's really cool and the software that uh, ThinkFlood has developed is really pretty powerful. Uh, just as a little precursor to this box, I'm gonna kind of show you what you get in it. It's a nice packaging with a magnetic clasp and you pull this off here and it comes with two things. You get a keychain. Uh, it's this little keychain here that allows you to pop your Red Eye Mini into there and uh, you can, you know, tote it around on your keys so you don't have to uh, leave it plugged into your iOS device. And then uh, right here you have the actual uh, transmitter itself. Now this is a infrared attachment for your iOS device and uh, it does a very good job at what it does. Um, you can see the Red Eye logo right there and you plug this into your headphone jack and your iPad using the ThinkFlood app or your iPhone or your iPod Touch can transmit the same information that this does for much less. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a demo at the end of the video, but I do want to talk about the pros and cons of this and give you a little overview of the software. First of all, the biggest pro is again, it's very cheap. Uh, and not only that, but it's also really elegant. The setup is very, very nice. I think Flood has done an excellent job at making sure the concierge software is good at what it does. And boy, is it. I mean, you get, again, the elegance of um, well, you get much more elegance than you do with the Harmony One software. Uh, it's all done on your iPad or your iPhone or your iPod. Uh, you download all the codes right there. You can set up using a touch interface. You don't have to drag buttons around with a mouse. And, you know, it's just way more elegant. And so that's one of the reasons it's really awesome. And, uh, you know, the second is you can set up activities. It's not just a remote, but you can actually set up more powerful activities than even the dish. Uh, or even the Logitech Harmony One. And I'm going to get into those when we get downstairs to do the little demo. But, uh, you know, a couple of the cons. There are cons with this product, and I'm going to get into them. Uh, first of all, it requires an iOS device that's fully charged or, you know, it has partial charge or whatever. And so this isn't going to be really all that practical unless you have you know, five iPod touches in your family for five of your family members and all of them are set up with the exact same configuration or maybe customized configuration. But that's one of the issues is, uh-oh, you know, you'll often find yourself leaving your iPad downstairs so the next person can watch TV with this. And so really, uh, you have to give a dedicated iOS device, which at $250 is like, well, why not just get one of these, you know? So that's one thing to note. And the second thing to note is, you know, it's 
there's two things that really irritate me about this. The first one is it's huge. So with iPhone, with iPod Touch, even with iPad cases, you will have to remove your case in order to use this. Kind of a lame design if you ask me, but uh, that is something you'll have to do. And the second of all is when you plug in your device, uh, the infrared burst on this uh, requires a significant amount of power. So if you plug it in and it uses your headphone volume, if your headphone volume is down like here, it'll say, hey, you don't have enough power to send any transmission out. So you're gonna have to turn the volume on your headphone jack all the way out and it'll say, okay, we're good to go. But when we pl unplug this and plug in our headphones say, Remember, unless we turn that volume down, the headphone volume is at 100%, which means holy freaking crap if we put headphones on, that's gonna be loud. So before you unplug it, you have to you know, remember to turn the volume down so you, next time you put in earphones or listen to a movie, you don't kill your own ears. And so there are a few things that aren't all that graceful about it. The menu system is a little bit frustrating on the software until you really figure it out. It's not incredibly intuitive and so, those are just a few of the cons, but there are a lot of pros that far outweigh that of the cons. So we'll go downstairs and give you a little demo of the software and uh, kind of see how this all works. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so we have our Red Eye Mini and we have the application downloaded onto our iPhone, iPod, and or iPad. Now, we're going to go into navigation to select the room that we're in. Uh, I can say I'm here in the family room, which is again nice about the Think Flood. Uh, Red Eye Mini because not only can you be in multiple rooms, but you can also have multiple activities for each room, which as we all know, uh, the Harmony One can only be in one room at a time. So this is great because you can use it for every room in your house rather than just one. So we're gonna press family room and it goes, okay, you're in the family room, what do you wanna do? Now I've only set up one activity, but you could have eight, you know, watch, or you could have a hundred, you know, watch DVR, watch satellite, uh, watch, Blu-ray, play PlayStation, yada, yada, yada. There's endless multiple or possibilities. So I'm gonna press watch DVR because that's, well, what I'll be doing. And it opens this tab up and goes, okay, here's our remote. Now it actually didn't do anything. This is the other thing about the Think Flood that I'm not entirely a fan of. The, the transmitter itself isn't very great, <laughs> no offense to it, but uh, it's not the best transmitter. So it does have to be pretty much directly pointed at the TV or at your burster or else it's not gonna work, which uh, I felt like the Harmony One did a little bit better job at. But you have full access to pretty much everything you would on your remote. Now, uh, this is all programmable as well. So you can change the button size, you can change the layout, the color, where you want what. It really gives you 100% full uh, compatibility, which is really awesome. Now you have all your DVR controls down here. I could pause TV and it will stop transmits correctly uh, as it did and I can press play and it'll play sorry this transmitter isn't the best I press play and it'll play uh, I can do all these buttons up here do you know control my navigation and all that good stuff uh, my volume for example I could do for example okay so this is all set up for my satellite receiver all these numbers all this play pause all this okay stuff and you know I don't want my volume to be controlled by my satellite receiver in fact I don't even want my volume to control the TV so as I've set up my amplifier to control uh, my AV receiver is currently you know when I press volume that's what it controls which is nice and again you have full compatibility with different devices all in the same interface which is really cool so that's nice to see now on the right side here is something that I love and you're not going to get with the Harmony the Harmony one from Logitech, and it is a full menu or a guide. So I said, I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I have Dish Network, and it goes, okay, and it grabs all the channels for me with all of the current programming, as, all, as well as all future programming. So rather than having to access the guide and you're bugging everyone else because you want to see what's on, or you want to see what game's on in 30 minutes, but you don't want to disrupt SpongeBob because you know the brothers will get mad. So what this allows you to do is browse your guide without having to actually enter the guide. Everything shows up here. You can see all the channels. It goes, okay, yada, yada, uh, here you go. So for example, let's go to the 300s where the movies are. Um, excuse me, 300s. Okay, now here we are on HBO right here. And let's say I wanna watch Crush, okay? That's on uh, 304. Not only can I get uh, the actual show information by pressing the uh, the info key, it'll tell me all the actors, it'll tell me the movie, when it was released, how many stars it got, all this really awesome information. Uh, it gives you rating and closed captioning as well, but you can also select to watch now. So I'm gonna point this at my TV and press watch now. 
and it enters 304 and it says, hey, you're gonna be carried out to live mode because I am currently not live. I press okay and it goes, there you go. Now, of course, on my TV, <laughs> there's a parental restriction for R-rated movies so I can enter the four digit pin and I press enter and Crush will begin to play. It's really cool. I think there's a lot of really fantastic features that you don't get with the Logitech Harmony One. There are a few problems with it though, as we've talked about before. And uh, you know, you really just have to know how to get around those. Uh, of course with the case and then the transmitter itself, as you guys see, it pretty much has to be pointed directly at the TV or else it's not gonna work. The Harmony One, you can kind of do it at an angle or at a side or whatever. This pretty much has to be dead on in order to operate, which is kind of a bummer. And I think they should have made maybe a little bit of a better transmitter, but the interface, once you get used to it, is really easy to use. It's really intuitive and I prefer it to, a, you know, my pers I personally re prefer it to my Logitech Harmony One. And again, of course, the issues are, you're gonna pretty much have to dedicate a device to this. And at the same time, you're gonna be wondering, well, is that cheaper or the same as the Logitech Harmony One? So it really is a toss up in terms of cost. If you're living at home by yourself or you maybe you and your wife, you can program both your iPhones to do the same thing and you can each have one of these to tote around and it really does a great job. But other than that, I don't really see it that practical in family use. So this is Quinn, that's Nazi iPhone Guy. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.